Welcome back to another message crawler update. I know I haven't updated you guys in a while what I've been up to and I think because I haven't been doing too many changes um, they were mostly changes to existing tools so I kind of been saving them up to go over everything later and now is that time later where I want to show you what I've changed uh, in message crawler and how I modified existing tools that were already there. So they're mostly updates and enhancements to what's already been inside message crawler. So let's go to my screen and talk about it. And first thing I want to show you is Slack. Um, so one of the things uh, people mentioned to me when they were using Slack is they're like, well, Nikolai, you know, it's good, but there are few enhancements you could make, um, you know, here and there. And I'm like, nah, it's fine. What are you talking about? It's perfect, you know. Um, but then I had to do a slack conversion job myself that that was really sizable, right? Like a big slack project. And once I did it myself, I kind of realized like, uh, yeah, some improvements could be made. So this, this inspired the video um, that I did on my normal YouTube channel. I'm not sure when it's going to be posted, why software sucks. And it's because the, the programmers aren't users of their own software. So once I actually used the software, I really felt like what users felt when they were using it. And so what I modified here is I modified my attachments path, right? So you can customize where attachments are being saved uh, because when you do, you know, separate JSON files like, uh, you know, channels and DMs, you may want to create them into separate volumes, right? And, and this way, the way I had it before, all attachments would go into the same folder. And there is a good good logic behind it because if you have duplicate Slack IDs that are assigned to files, you would not get duplicate files. So theoretically, this was a good space saving technique. Now, I don't know if it actually worked out or not because I don't know how Slack would assign those IDs. But theoretically, if the same file was passed on around, there would be only one copy of it saved. So I kind of, had to go away with that and create uh well you could still do that you can still point all your exports to the same attachments folder but so i did that and the other thing i added is i wanted to make sure they're subfolders right so we don't have too many files per folder so that increased the complexity because now when somebody specifies the path i have to make a dir list of that folder before i start exporting and then compare uh, what I'm saving to that dir list to make sure that if files are already there, it's not going to download them again. So that's been enhancement for Slack. Again, this is something that I should have listened to people and I was too dismissive of their feedback. And once I experienced myself, you know, have to admit, uh, yeah. So those are the improvements for Slack. Um, then we're going to go to Teams. Now, Teams had to be modified a few times. And what happens there is attachment extraction is a little weird. Sometimes you get uh, files that are attached. Sometimes they're linked. Sometimes they link to SharePoint. And what I added here is path to where SharePoint data is exported. So one of the steps in the collection is to not just export Teams communications, but export SharePoint files, which go to a separate folder. And what you can do here is point to that folder, and now Message Crawler will read the link that's saved as attachment. It will parse it out, so it will take the file name from the link and previous two subfolders, and it will try to match it up to the path you specify where data is exported to. And if it connects the two, It'll substitute the link with that attachment, and now everything is going to be awesome, All right? So this this took a little while to figure out, and uh, I had to rely on people actually sending me data so that um, I could test it. And there were a lot of variations too. Sometimes folders were uh, all messed up, and the folder structure was inconsistent. So there was some weird stuff happening here. And something tells me Teams isn't done. You know, there's going to be more work on this. Um, the other thing I added is skip duplicates. I noticed that, well, there were duplicates, right? And there were duplicates inside the same PST. So even though two people are talking to each other, 
you have folder for person one, folder for person two, and they could have same messages. And when you load it, that just doesn't make any sense. It makes sense from like, if you're doing a per custodian export, you know, that's kind of nice, but I kind of added that this way, it'll compare from two timestamp and text. And if they're the same, it'll just skip the next copy of it because that's what you most likely going to do anyway. Uh, that is generally teams. So I'm, I'm happy with this. I think I'm going to have to, to tinker with attachment extraction even more because like I said, there are lots of different ways you can store attachments. There are like five ways to attach things. So I'm sure Microsoft is going to surprise me there. Uh, next we can look at Celebrite. So Celebrite, uh, some of the files that you get from Celebrite are super large. So I added this option to load XML files differently. So this also took a while to figure out. Uh, basically, I don't just grab all the XML. I have to read it in little chunks and parse them. Um, and that takes up way less memory in the computer. So it's able to kind of stream it into memory and only take the uh, meaningful information. XML files like really bloated if you try to grab everything. Uh, it's just too much and if you just only take necessary pieces from it, then it makes it more manageable. Uh, this doesn't support SMS, MMS, so if you're using like an old style Celebrite uh, prior to early 2020, I'm guessing, uh, SMS, MMS will not be loaded, you have to use the old feature, but in the newer, I believe since fall of 2020, SMS and MMS are part of chat messages or instant messages they've been integrated basically so you don't have to worry about it so this should work fine for you all right moving on we got instagram so i had to rewrite instagram completely so this was the old one and i had this there used to be media.json and messages.json and it seems like they've changed the format because the newer exports i got they have posts.json and stories.json uh Interestingly enough, there is no name inside those JSON files. You have to specify username. Uh, then you specify attachments path, where to grab them from, and so on. So that's uh, that's that's been working fine. Now, if you have messages, right? If you have messages from Instagram, you use Facebook tool for them. So Facebook messages and Instagram messages are the same. So if you need to parse Instagram messages, you use the Facebook tool. They're owned by the same company, right? So. Uh, we all know that. And the final update, this Android backup by SyncTech. So this is kind of cool. I'm generally not into self-collection or things like that, but uh, there is this uh, company SyncTech that makes uh, backup software. And if you're on Android, you can just download the app, hit a button, and you can get XML of all your texts. Well, there's going to be SMS, MMS, um, not sure what else. It's not going to go to like Facebook or WhatsApp or something, but it'll grab you all your normal text messages, including pictures, and it'll embed all the pictures inside this giant XML file. And this will be able to parse it. So again, this is import that stream. So it's the same idea as a Celebrate one. So this will take the all the pictures, pull them out of XML file, save them to attachments folder, parse everything out. So this is, this is kind of cool, right? If you just have somebody who's got texts on Android and they just need to share them, I don't know how much this app is, but I can't imagine it'd be too expensive. You know, you could just say, hey, download this app, send me the XML, convert with message crawler, bang, goes into relativity, done. You don't need any forensics or you don't need, you know, you eliminating a lot of steps and a lot of problems. Um, there are, of course, downsides to it. You may want to have your data go through the proper process. But again, that's up to you. So that's uh, that's kind of it. That This is it for the version of 468. This is what the current version is. So if you don't have it, download it. Thank you for checking it out. I will see you next time with more updates on Message Caller.